To be able to take samples of the scarlet macaws, you have to first be able to get into the nest, which means bringing all the equipment in and all the equipment out. Here's Dr. Shannon Dawkins and Dr. Melvin Merida bringing in our equipment to be able to take the samples of the birds. It's a short hike, it's less than a mile, and on the way we are able to pass Mayan ruins in this particular place in the north part of Guatemala. As we approach the nest, we take time out to enjoy the beauty of the parents, the male and the female. We're also checking out their behavior. We're checking out if they're there. We can see some ways how their health is doing by looking at them from afar. We will eventually frighten them from the nest. They will fly away. Some parents stay in the area and others will leave while we take the blood. We will be taking samples of young chicks in the nest and to be able to do that our climbers, our very experienced climbers, will need to climb the nest to get up to the cavity. This is using a system of ascenders and here you can see we have one safety line hooked in to the harness. Here we find a second one. One is attached to the rope and to the ascender and this is Kinder who will be climbing this nest up into this tree. Here Kendra has reached the nest cavity and is getting the rope ready to lower the chicks in the bag that will be coming down. The chicks are on the ground and Dr. Merida is weighing the birds with the pasola. There's the scarlet macaw in the sack, reading out the weight of the bird. And here's the bird coming out of the sack and this is the time when we'll be doing a physical examination of the bird. Dr. Melvin Merida will be doing a whole variety of different kinds of examinations and here I am, this is Dr. Laura King Joyner, coming in to record what we will be seeing with this bird. Here he is checking out the body score of the bird as well as the crop size. And here is where we doing our various biometric measurements and off to the side we see some local archaeologists from the ruins being able to enjoy and experience what is going on with their native birds in this land. We use these biometrics to understand the development and any reproducting limiting factors that may be in these birds that we are working with. So 
Here we are also getting ready to take the measurement of the wing. We do the radius as well as the wing cord. Dr. Melvin Merritt are using calipers to work on this, and sometimes the calipers aren't long enough, and we move on to using tape measures to measure the length of the wing. Ciento, ciento, ciento dieciocho punto nueve. Veintiocho punto cinco. Sí, eso es 10 centímetros. 20, 28, 28 uh, 25. Uh -huh. Okay, ya, yeah, 15. Y tarso, si usted puede. Y ahorita vamos a ver. The very last thing that we do with the chick is to take the blood. It can be a little stressful for the bird. Here you can see that we have the bird in lateral recumbency. It's on its back. Kinder has a fairly firm, secure grip on the bird, but not over pressure. He's got his hand around the, the keel section, the abdomen of the bird, and with his fingers, he's locked in and stabilized the humerus there. And so the bird does strain a little bit, and he sort of lets the bird go and just chew on things and kind of ride the bird to walk be with the bird as we take the blood. We don't want undue stress. These are wild animals, although they are young. Dr. Shannon Dawkins has got her hands helping to stabilize the feet, a very important part of taking blood from a young bird, as well as stabilizing the wing so that we do not get a fracture or any injury to the wing if the bird suddenly moves. And we have never had that. And Dr. Merida is just looking for the ulnar vein there, cleansing the area a little bit being really clear that he can visualize the vein because that is very important in taking blood. We usually take between two and three cc's for the variety of examinations we will be using um, in this laboratory protocol that we have to determine the health and nutritional status of these birds. A veces si usted cambia el ángulo de la aguja viene más rápido. Ahí creo que ya paró, fíjese. No se va. Once the chick is safely back in the nest, we now turn our attention to preparing the samples for later analysis. One of the most difficult and for me most stressful aspects of doing this field work is to make good quality slides underneath the nest. The temperature and the humidity is very problematic, just as well as the stress and being able to concentrate in unusual circumstances and places to prepare ourselves, to have the supplies. It can be a challenge. What I've been doing is keeping the blood mixed well. It is in anticoagulant of lithium heparin. Melvin takes it with a microhematic tube, not heparinized, to be able to make his slides. Placing a dot on the slide and then using the push-pull method to be making the slides. Dr. Dawkins will also be helping out in the meantime because it usually takes making two or three slides for every one that we are eventually able to keep. Gracias, Kinder. Okay, I pull or is it coagulado? I think it's coagulado. No. Yo digo que es rápido. Demasiado. 
Podemos usar. Yo no sé si es coagulado. Tal vez solo es polvo. Tiene que lavar los frotes antes. Limpio. Y mejor para hacer solo porque la gota va a secar. Eso es mejor para. Primero uno. Y Ajá. Sí. Y pienso que no es coagular y solo es, pienso que es cosa de sucio. ¿Esto? This may be a slightly boring sequence here of images showing Dr. Merida labeling the slides. I can't tell you how easy it is to go wrong, to mislabel, to not label. And so we really want to emphasize this point of labeling clearly and well and rechecking underneath the nest and then rechecking once you come out of the field and rechecking before you leave the country. What we will be showing in this sequence is applying methanol to fix the slides. The slides don't have to be all the way dry. As you can see here, they're still somewhat wet. That we apply the methanol so we can fix the slides. And this will fix the slides up for several months so they can be analyzed and reanalyzed. <laughs> Dicen que no puede fijar desmateado. Listo entonces. No sé. Sí, sí, sí. Here we're almost done with our work. We're just letting the slides air dry, okay. and then we'll be able to pack up and go. And as we leave, the parents have indeed returned and have been nearby the whole time. You can see how hot it is for them. And so we say goodbye to them and to the chick and thank them and the climbers and everyone for doing this work. We now have walked back out to the truck and we plug into the car's battery to be able to use the centrifuge where we have spun down the blood and we are separating the serum. We will put it on ice until we can take it the eight hours back to the city where it will be frozen and then we will await the permit so we can bring this serum into the United States. We're bringing the serum in to do blood chemistry and protein electrophoresis to understand the health status of these birds and the nutritional status as well. Estamos como 200 metros de mil, más o menos. Aquí es el grupo de subir, mirando con mucha paciencia. El poder de este centrifugador es para el carro. We're using a converter in the cigarette lighter for the centrifuge. I'm now asking Melvin how he enjoys his work and why he's here. I think you can tell by just listening to him and looking to him how much he appreciates the colleagues he works here. He's told me how much he loves the birds in the past and also how much she really appreciates that they're able to get the data that will help these birds and in this area and help the people too. Hey Shannon, ¿por qué usted está aquí trabajando? In English or Spanish? In English, I guess. I'm here because I enjoy being out in the woods, enjoy working with such a beautiful uh, bird species. I love the macaws in general and being able to see them in, a in the wild is something that's 
priceless that most people don't get to do and to be able to do things to help them is very mm -hmm. rewarding and be with these people that are feeling similarly like yourself. Get up here. <laughs> Y chalo, ¿por qué usted está trabajando aquí? Por una buena causa, que es eh, proteger las guacamayas, la guacamaya roja, mm -hmm. de que está en grave peligro de extinción. Y si nosotros no, no trabajamos duro para poderla conservar, pues eh, esta especie desaparece muy, va a desaparecer muy pronto. Mm -hmm. Entonces, por eso, desde que WSS está trabajando para. para proteger la, la especie ¿verdad? para conservarla uh -huh. y gracias a ustedes veterinarios que están aquí con nosotros trabajando ayudándonos a, a ver qué enfermedades tienen las guacamayas para poder combatirlas y, y que las guacamayas puedan vivir sin enfermedades. Oh, qué muy gracias. bien, gracias. ¿Y Kinder? <risa> ¿Qué usted está trabajando aquí? Ah, bueno, porque here I have the same question I asked Chalo was why are they working here? And Kinder repeats much of the same sentiment. They work here to protect a species that is in danger of extinction. It is a wonderful cause. They enjoy their workmates and the beauty of the birds and they give thanks to the international people that have made their work possible. And so we say goodbye to Kinder and Chalo and Shannon and Melvin and all the birds and the people of Guatemala and give thanks to them and to Lefevre Conservation and Wildlife that has made this work possible and to all of you who contribute each in your own way. Bye-bye.